You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. The show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and Extreme Exteriors. You can count on Extreme Exteriors for expert installation of exterior siding, roofing, soffits, fascia, decks, windows, and more. With their knowledge and experience, they can design the perfect solution to make your home beautiful and energy efficient, saving you maintenance and money for years to come. Give them a call at 763-441-1334 and tell them Gene sent you. It's time now to hear from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by New Concepts Rental Management. Whether you're an accidental landlord or a seasoned investor, New Concepts Rental Management can advise and guide you through every aspect of the business. Give us a call at 952 922-2500. Are you a member of the Community Associations Institute? For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit caionline.org to learn more. The address again is caionline.org. CAI helps community associations board members by providing online resources, in-person training, and hard copy publications written by association management experts. CAI offers community managers professional development, networking opportunities, and a certification program that is established as the industry standard nationwide. Minnesota has its own chapter of the Community Associations Institute to bring resources and tools from community associations around the country right to your home. Visit www.cai-mn.com to learn more and become a member of CAI today. Your community and management company will benefit from your involvement. Join the Community Associations Institute today at cai-mn.com and click on Membership. If you're just joining us, uh, we're talking uh, about uh, responses to a uh, blogger who believes they have the perfect argument against living in a homeowners association. Uh, First item that she brought up in our first segment was the end of individualism. And as I mentioned uh, before, we have the freedom to do a lot to express ourselves. I have the freedom to express my arms and to swing them. But the closer you live to people and society, the greater the responsibility becomes and uh, the greater duties you have. I can swing. I have freedom to swing my arms, but it stops before it hits your nose. And so that was uh, what I was saying is a kind of proof that, yes, we do have some responsibility with uh, other people. Uh, Freedom isn't just totally uh, free to do whatever you want. The second uh, item, excuse me, that she brings up in her blog as a reason against living in a homeowners association, she says problem number two is that they are just plain too bureaucratic. And she says, uh, we believe in government of the people by the people. And she said this premise is alive in HOAs. But then she says, but, and every time you use the word, but, so everything you have got to remember that everything, the person that said right up to that, they're now throwing out the window (laughs) Uh, and see if that's not true. Uh, Chris, would you agree with me? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So as soon as someone says, but yeah, you've just negated everything you've just uh, stated or you're trying to like soften them up for something. Exactly. And so she just said, yes, we believe in government of the people by the people. But when you're talking about a board that's comprised of local homeowners and people who have a vested interest in things, all that seems to be fine. People that live in the community and have a vested interest, those are the people I want. But, she's got another but, but perhaps not the emotional maturity to govern or the kind of leadership backgrounds required for those roles. Things get complicated. Bureaucracy is a hard enough, is hard enough for those who know how to manage it, but when it is something like an HOA, you're left without an outside board of appeals and or, a, a, an, she said, uh, any kind of uh, conflict management or resolution. So her se- second 
premise here is they're just too bureaucratic because basically, well, God bless them, they're, they're, they're going to run for the board, but a lot of people just don't have emotional maturity to know how to govern. And it sounds like what she's uh, uh, equating emotion, emotional maturity to would that be to uh, her style of emotion, her preference for how things ought to be. And I don't know if you can necessarily equate that just because someone doesn't agree with me, someone doesn't have the same emotions that I do, I don't know that uh, their opinion is any less uh, valid. But uh, she gives this idea that uh, people are unprepared uh, to for their role in government. So it makes me want to ask the question, well, uh, how do you how do you propose to solve that? Uh, are you suggesting psychological testing for anybody before uh, they become a board member because you don't know whether or not they have emotional maturity to govern? Um, you know, uh, and if you need to have emotional maturity to govern and you're thinking that maybe a psychological test isn't too bad of an idea, uh, why stop at HOAs? Uh, wouldn't it be even more important with someone who would, say, be representing me on the federal government as a senator or someone in Congress? <laughs> uh, don't they have even more far uh, uh, longer reach in terms of what uh, they can do and what they can see established, not only for our country but in the world? Um, and so I, I think it's just... Uh, uh, interesting that uh, she said one of the things are just too bureaucratic. And when someone says things are too bureaucratic, sometimes what they're really saying is, um, I don't like the way you do things. I want things that are going to be done a little bit quicker. And she gives an example. What's the example she gives in her article? And this was a story we covered a couple weeks ago, listeners. Uh, you probably remember that. Remember there was a couple that uh, saw... Uh, a gentleman, uh, he was not a gentleman, but saw a man uh, beat up what appeared to be his girlfriend who lived across the street in an HOA. And they were concerned because uh, it, it took a while before the police came. And so one of the things that they did is they asked for permission by the Homeowners Association to put a motion-censored uh, light by their bedroom window that would look out over the area where this fight took place to try and hopefully detract things like that from happening again. And if you remember in the article, uh, the person who wrote the article thought, oh, HOAs were just terrible and they were, they were too bureaucratic because it couldn't be done instantly and it took several weeks. And that's what this woman talks about. She said the you remember that article on HOA, she said, opens with an account of a couple experienced repeated assaults occurring near their property and requested the motion-activated safety light. And uh, she said, one, and she said that uh, the request to install it took weeks to get action. Well, I don't know if I necessarily would uh, agree that that's too long. Uh, she ends up by saying further, one would think organizations convened to protect homeowners would take that responsibility seriously. She's really making a damning charge here against the homeowners association. I don't know. I, I guess I kind of think any decision that needs to be made by a committee or in a governing body, the idea that it gets done in a couple of weeks, I don't know that that's that bad. Um, try to get something done in a couple of weeks at City Hall. Try to get something done in a couple of weeks at the state legislature. Try to get anything done at all in Congress. And I'm serious about that. The idea that really the standard is that that's too long, the fact that it took two, a, couple, a couple of weeks before the person got an answer. And then listen to the statement she made, this idea that she said, you would think that the organization like the HOA that's convened or put together for the purpose to protect homeowners, well, I've got a bit of news for her. The primary purpose of a homeowners association is not 
the protection of homeowners. They're ill-equipped to be able to do that. I would submit to you that in a city or municipality, the police force and uh, the uh, fire department are in place and convened and put together to protect you. The Homeowners Association has a whole different reason for coming together. The reason you get together in a Homeowners Association, number one, you want to have some uh, continuity with things. She talked about how she thought it was lovely that a 1957 Chevy body was as parked as art in uh, the yard of her neighbor. Not a lot of people agree with that. A lot of people don't like the idea that there would be hundreds and hundreds of pink flamingos in someone's lawn. And so the idea that things are a little bit more neutral and a little bit more the same, a lot of people like that idea. A lot of people uh, like the uh, idea that, uh, that it's going to be something that's going to be very similar and, and the same. And uh, the association, their responsibility not to, pr- to protect, but they will provide services for you. And guess what? Those, those services will be provided at uh, a great price. That's why people go into a homeowners association, not because they expect protection, because they hope to save money. Think about it. In an HOA, you probably pay, on average, most people probably pay no more than, oh, anywhere between $27 to $35 a month for all lawn care and snow removal. That's a pretty good deal. You live in a home by yourself, single-family home, I think you'd be hard-pressed, even with a small lot, to find anyone to come out for less than uh, 25 to 50 bucks a time to cut your grass or each time to plow your driveway, let alone to be able to find that happening on a monthly basis. So the reason people go into an HOA, not the primary reason for protection, primary reasons to save money and to be able to have some some continuity in the neighborhood. Well, there's another reason she wants to talk that she thinks is going to be the piece de resistance of why people shouldn't live in HOAs. I think you can guess. I kind of don't think uh, she's correct in these, but we'll find out what that is after these messages. 